Okay, what's up and welcome back. This is the Procon Geek and in today's video, which is episode 3 of Procon Tutorials for Beginners in English, we're going to be covering the different analysis and design modules that are in Procon and we're going to be talking about the different capabilities and features that each one has before delving into each and every one of them. So this is going to be an overview of all the design modules and so without wasting too much time, let's just get right into it. Okay, so like I told you in the introduction today, we need to look at the design and analysis modules that Procon has to offer. In the previous videos, we talked about how to download and install the video and install the application, I mean. Then in the last video, we talked about the user preferences, how you can change it, switch the style, Procon options. We talked about the general working for the preferences and Eurocode. So if you want that video, please check out in the description box below and we'll cover it. But now, today, we need to get started on the rest of all these tabs that you see and look at the different design and analysis modules that they have. So you may be asking me, what do I mean by the different analysis and design modules that they have? Now, if you remember, if you go back to Procom, you can go back to their website, right? You see they have a different modules for frame and finite element analysis, general structure analysis, geotech analysis. ProNet, Water, and Network Analysis, this is only available as an extension for AutoCAD. And then they also have modules for detailing and design. As you can see, there's detailing and then there is design. So the different suites, and if you remember, if you wanted to do, you can see if we go to all list of all individual downloads, right? These are all the downloadable modules that you have. You have modules for structural analysis, for steel member design, steel connection design, concrete design, timber, Masonry, CAD and detailing and other general application that you can use if you want to do anything else. And there you go, program system, the different program car, program calculator, program text editor, program and the DWG engine, all of this we'll talk about it. So now we just need to look at all those modules that you get after you open the program user interface and you're greeted with this step that we edited in the previous video. Okay. So to get started, we need to look at the first step that you get that is analysis. So yes, remember everything is in demo, but you don't have to worry about it. So the first tab or the first button that you have is A0 is called ProConsumo. This is a structure model. What it does, it helps you to model all your reinforced concrete and steel structures, right? In actual 3D format where you'll be placing beams, supports, columns and everything else, right? Then you have frame. This is frame analysis. What it does, it allows you to analyze your structure in terms of lines, and the actual spindle. So what it does, this will be giving you the actual 3D format. That is, you'll be able to see your structure as it is in real life. This one will model it mostly as stick frames. You remember those stick drawings we used to do when you do your first analysis of structures course or even analysis, um, they call it structural analysis. I think this is in level two or level one, depending on what college you went to or what country you're from, right? Then you have plain stress, and strain analysis. This one is allows you to analyze plane strain, uh, plane stress, or the stress in one plane for a certain structure. This could be for buildings, bridges, and everything. We'll talk more about it when I open the the module for you. But then I just want to give you an overview. Then what you have under this is A11, which is analysis of a single span beam. This is what you want to use if you have mostly a simply supported beam. You can try and use it for the different spans of a continuous beam, but let me just tell you before we go further, there is a better analysis module or analysis and design. This is actually analysis and design. This one allows you to analyze continuous beams and then go on to design it. So sometimes you don't really want to spend your time using this one, but this one has a cool function where it's linked to the steel strut member design for actual stress. That's if you remember. Some of the things, whether you're in a truss or you're in a bridge, some of the members or the cords can be approximated to beams. So it will be good for you to start with the analysis module. That is the beam analysis of a single span. Then transport whatever results you have to the strut member design for actual stress or even member design for combined stress. I'll show you more about it when we click on it, how these two are linked. But just remember in demo mode, the functionality will be limited. Next up, what you have is ELAS or LSA12, which is, let me just show on it, analysis of a beam on an elastic support. This is a module that is mostly used to design strap beams or even railroad tracks because your beams 
If you remember, railroad tracks can be approximated to beams which are out on the ground or supported all along the entire length is supported on a ground. But the problem is the ground is approximated to an elastic support. So this is what you use whenever you have a beam that is going to be a ground. So I'm just giving you two examples, a strap beam or the railroad foundation. No, sorry, it's not foundation. It is the railroad tracks of a train. Okay. Now that we have covered the main tab of analysis or the analysis tab where you can analyze either structures or beams, the next thing we need to do is go to the steel tab where you have the steel design and the steel analysis modules. So first thing that you need to understand under steel, you have this tab or this section that allows you to design, analyze and design members. Then you have one that allows you to analyze and design girders. Then if you want to do moment connections, this is, you remember, moment frames or anything in steel buildings, mostly we already know in most steel structures, what you do is you start with, um, you start off with an assumption of a member, then you need to design the connections because sometimes, for example, if your load is going to be 500 kilonewtons actual load and you want to design a steel column, I'll tell you from off the head, all you need to do is grab a 126 square hollow section right 120 by 120 by 10 it'll be able to carry that load so the only problem that you would want to design is the bay plate connection and the beam column connection so this is why you see that under steel you mostly have to design moment connections and shear connections but then it can be different this members is mostly when you want to design the members of a truss and they can for example cr beam this allows you to design for a crane gantry get the beam this is mostly helpful when you have a warehouse that is going to have a crane that will be supporting or transporting a lot of things you would want to use this module then you have the plate get the beam design this is when you want to design a component of a bridge where you mostly find plate getters okay most of these other things are self-explanatory for example this is for the base plate this is for the boat group this is for cleat connection so you don't have to worry about but we're going to delve into them much much in depth and we'll look at them later on but for now, let's go to concrete. So concrete is quite easy. And this is where we are going to spend most of our time because most of the structures that people are interested in are reinforced concrete, right? So as you can see, this is a demo, but you don't even have to worry about. But the most module that we are going to be using quite a lot is the continuous beam slash slab module because this module allows you to design continuous beams and slabs. And this is where you also design flat slabs, rib slabs, and also the ribs of slabs or even just no more slabs, right? And then you have the post tension beam or slab. This allows you to calculate, analyze, and design post tension beams. I think you can tweak it as well to use it for pre stressed, right? But I only know or have designed using post tension beams. So I would not know if it is good for pre stressed beams. I don't want to say it out or lie to you, but I'll definitely try and see if I can use it for pre stressed beams or even contact someone from Procode and see what they say. Then this one is for designing for rectangular slab panel. That is the normal rectangular slab panel that you would want. So this is going to be a very useful uh, tab that you're going to be using. I don't know if this is now a tab or whatever this could be, but just know that under beams and slabs, we're going to be using it quite a lot. Then the next thing that you're going to have is the components. This allows you to design the different components that make up an RC or reinforced concrete building. So as you know, in any reinforced concrete, you always have your slabs, your beams, then you're going to have your columns, then you're going to have walls, and you're going to have bases. So the beams and slabs are already there, and this will cover the rest of the components which are not under beams and slabs. So this is self-explanatory. This is what you use to design rectangular columns. Then this one is for circular columns, and this is what you use to design general columns which are not rectangular or circular. So what are we talking about? We're talking about LB, uh, no, sorry, not beams, L columns. Columns that have funny shapes, columns that have openings, for example, columns that need to carry rainwater pipes. There's a project that we did where we had rainwater pipes. This is definitely the one that you would want to use, which is called general column, right? Or even if you're going to have installation or electrical components in your column, this is the module that you would want to use. Next up, this is for the retaining wall, but you can even try and use it as well for normal walls. It's not much of a problem, right? You can always try to design them if it's a shear wall. But then remember, a shear wall can be designed as a column, right? That has just a very, very long section. Now, last but not least, under these components, you're going to have bases. So this is what you use when you're designing any isolated pad footings. And yeah, isolated pad footings in general. 
So unfortunately, there's no emoji for wrapped foundations. I have so many questions about this, but we will try and cover it in another video. I'll show you some of the tweaks and things that you can use. Sometimes we're not even going to use program. We're going to use Tekla Ted's or other softwares or another I can program Excel sheets for you that you can use. So please stay tuned and keep watching these videos. Then last but not least, you're going to have the sections. This is where you can design for you can design any section. Mostly you would want to use this to check a pre-designed section, something that was designed by someone else and you want to check whether or even the one that you have designed to see if the crack width will be okay and also just concrete section design. This allows you to check whether a concrete section will be adequate to carry a certain moment and then in the cases of flash slabs or even column bases, you can use this one to check for the patchy shear and see whether everything that you've designed because you could design a flash slab it could pass, but when it comes to punching shear, it could fail. So these, all these other things are not able to check, except this one can do check for punching shear, but all these other cannot check for punching shear. So what you would need to do is check for punching shear using CC23 module. Then up next, you're going to have the timber and masonry. So if you're in Africa, uh, this is not going to be much of a big deal. You don't even need to use it because as I know, we don't really build structures in timber or masonry anymore. Maybe if you're in Europe, they still use masonry. And if you're in America, they still use timber. But if you, we're not going to play too much under this tab. We don't really need to waste our time there. Because for most parts, we're not even going to be using this. And if you're in the States, you normally don't even use Procon. Procon is only in Canada. So in the, you could use CSI or E-tabs or anything else. So we're not going to waste our time on this module. Now, then what we're going to do is we have the CAD and detailing. Right, I think you have seen more tutorials where I've done or showed you how to detail and draw using a CAD. So this is going to be the main go-to application that we're going to be using. I'm going to show you a lot. So what we're going to do is after this program, we're going to have a separate pads and detailing beginner series where we're going to go in depth just with pro pads because there's a lot that we're going to talk about it. And detailing has a lot of things in detail. After this, so we're going to branch off into pads and then we're going to branch off as well into still continuing a program where I just do each and every one of these modules at their depth or just a bit and there. But when it comes to pads, there's a lot of things we need to talk about. So we're going to do a separate series for it on its own. Now, you will move to general. So this under general, what you can do is you can check uh, the properties of any section, calculate its properties, or you can even create your own custom sections that you will save in the section database, right? Then you also have a module that allows you to analyze the wind pressure in case you have three, four, five stories or you start going up. And then you can use Procon as well to size and design your gutters. If it's a normal home gutter, you just have to ask a plumber or anyone, carpenter, even anyone is a basic um, person. You need to have an idea of the gutter size that any house can hold. You don't really need to design a gutter for a small building or small house, right? Using this. So we may not, we will use it a bit, but not that much. Then this is the section database. You can just, what we're going to do is we're just going to click on it, right? This is where your actions, sections that will be stored, right? Your steel sections, concrete sections, timber sections, and you can even choose the country that you want. In this case, I'm using South Africa as my main country. But in a case where you're from China, Europe, India, Japan, as you can see, this goes, even Australia, it's even used in Australia. I know Procon Arab Australia uses Procon, so you can use it. It's it's not a challenge. Uh, let me just revert that I am I don't know. I have heard because I don't want to be sued for liable because I say so. Please, Procon, you are Australia. If you're watching this video, I take back my words. I'm not sure if you use it, but I've heard rumors that you use it. All right, I don't want to be sued for liable. Please, I'm just a small guy on YouTube. Please don't sue me. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is we're just going to close the section database because we don't need it anymore. We've talked about it. And then you also have your materials database. This is where you can choose the materials that you want, play around with them. You can even create your own materials, right? Other material imported from there. And then you also have the stress strain curves that allows you to design. So we don't really need to talk more about this. This is for if you're doing research. So we're just going to skip it for now. And then you also have the geotechnical tab, which is a lot of things that you can do stop slope stability and everything personally i haven't done any project that where you chalk where you check i just butchered that where you check the stability of any slopes but i know the theory i passed well when it came to geotech so i know how to design these things 
And when it comes to general, you can check the general bearing capacity of shallow foundations and even piles. And we will discuss more of this when we have a project that has to do with this, right? But this is mostly not beginner stuff, so we don't need it. Then we are drawing to an end, you have your scripts. So this gives you a different sort of program. Under the normal program, when you have it fully activated, you can add your own script. There's a little programs that you can create to do a certain number of things that you don't normally find in all these other things or you want to do quickly. For example, this one to check the buckling of an angle or this one allows you to check whether a T-beam has been designed or be designed to carry. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run the script. I'm going to show you, for example, we already have, they have module that you can use. And remember, you can always change the concrete section design when you go to user preferences. In this case, we're just going to click on OK. And given the data that we put in, this is what it's going to do. It's going to say, oh, this, as you can see, it's now validating to see if the section that you entered and the steel that you provided will be enough. And it will tell you the steel that you would require for this. So this is the required steel. All you have to do is then check with your own entered steel if it will be enough for this project. Right. So this extends to all these other ones you can do. Then you can edit the header as well. Right. Edit the header. Load the default, save as default if you want. What we can do is let's go back to this, edit our header. Then we're going to save this as default. Then we're just going to cancel. Then we're going to go back to this, which is called new project. Then we're going to edit header, uh, load default. And there you go. Then we have changed the header as well. So this is it. And the last but not least tab is the support tab. Okay, so this is where if you have Procon and it's activated, this is where you would want to attach, maybe say a touch a screenshot, right? Tell them a problem that you are having and then set it out to them or request support. Um, to be honest, I don't think they will be helping you if you don't have a license. But if you have the student license, they will definitely help you out. So I think this is it for just giving you an overview of all the analysis and design modules that you have available. No, I don't want to save any changes to this, so I'm just going to say no. All the analysis and design modules that you have in progress. So you have your home tab, analysis tab with all these modules, steel tab with all these modules, concrete with all these modules, timber with all these modules, CAD and detailing with all these modules, and the list goes on. So thank you very much for tuning in. This has been episode three of the Procon tutorials for beginners in English series. So please subscribe to the channel if you're new and what we'll do is we'll wrap the video up here and I'll see you in the next video where I think we now need to delve into the various design and analysis modules and we'll see which module we start with depending on which one gets the most likes.